So we've seen things that look very much like black holes, both in binary systems and in the middles of galaxies. But Brian, is the evidence enough to convince you that black holes really exist? Well, the evidence is pretty compelling. We think we understand neutrons, for example, and it's kind of hard to imagine how you can make a 10 solar mass neutron star, giving, given our understanding of neutrons. And when we look in the center of our Milky Way, the idea that you could have a million plus solar masses material and something, you know, the size of the solar system and it not being a black hole seems uh, unlikely. That being said, we, so we've got something that sort of, you know, smells like a black hole and feels like a black hole, but we have a problem. It's sort of by definition, it's kind of hard to look like a black hole. Now, there's a lot of um, stuff in the popular press coming out of the, the work of people like Stephen Hawking and Roger Penrose talking about possible really weird things in black holes, like the fact that black holes might actually shine if they're very small, or some, there's been some speculation about if you fall through a rotating black hole, you might go through a wormhole to another dimension, or things like this. What do you make of all this sort of stuff? I never really know what to make of it, because ultimately science is about theories with predictions. But, you know, we don't know a lot about how gravity uh, works at this, at this level. This is sort of going sort of beyond general relativity. And it's beginning to also mix in quantum mechanics. And that's a mixture we don't understand. That's one of the, the great unsolved mysteries of the universe. And yes, remember we talked about it back then when I mean, talking about the Big Bang. We have quantum mechanics which deals with very small things and relative to which deals with very massive things. Normally things are, one or the other works perfectly well in our labs on Earth. The only places where we need both are either the Big Bang, entire universe, no size, or a black hole. You, a few by 10 to the 30 kilograms, no size. And the things don't match at all. So given we have a theory which we know doesn't really work, especially when you get down to either singularity, what are we to do? I mean, you have to be guided by experiment, but we haven't got any black holes in our labs. Yeah, I think what's really quite remarkable is just how much our observations are able to progress. So, for example, I was just visiting Europe and was being shown an experiment to use radio telescopes across the continent to image the black hole in the center of our galaxy. And although you don't expect black holes to emit, they can cast shadows. So imagine if you can image that thing the size of a solar system in the middle of the galaxy and see the shadow of the black hole. That might pretty well cinch it for me. Yes, I guess we don't really want a black hole in our lab, but if you've got one a nice safe distance away, like eight kiloparsecs, and we can get these exquisitely good measurements, maybe we can really start putting some constraints on all these white, weird and wonderful theories from that. And you never know where, you know, things uh, might pop up where you least expect it. You know, one of the theories of Stephen Hawking is the idea is that black holes get very small, they evaporate very quickly. And you essentially are able, through quantum mechanics and the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, to create out of nothing uh, a particle pair, one on this side of the black hole and one on that side, and the one on the outside can escape. And so that is a very characteristic uh, prediction. Now, we're talking about black holes of the mass of atoms here, not the ones we've been talking about astrophysically. And so they would have to be created by some strange process back at the very early universe, if they exist at all. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, an Australian, John O'Sullivan, was out looking for these in the 70s and never found them when they were first predicted. But he was able to go out and invent uh, Wi-Fi from some of the ideas that he had in going and uh, looking for these things. But you never know. Maybe there are small little black holes, but they're rare enough that we haven't yet found it. So you never know with science where new ideas might pop up. So black holes, seriously weird, and possibly even much weirder than we think. Uh, because we don't have any in our lab, we can't tell. So I guess the future is trying to make really, really detailed astronomical observations of these black holes that are at nice, safe distances and try and see whether all these wonderful theories that people are coming up with actually bear much resemblance to reality or not. Absolutely.